Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. Nearly at the weekend. Hope you're all doing very well. Morning, morning to morning. Uh, Egos. What uh, what uh, country are we uh, speaking from this this uh, day? Well, it's Ohio Gazamas. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. How are you guys? Have you realised yeah, that? Uh, hey, have you realised Ryan logs in literally third? 30 seconds before we're due to start. He's yeah, he, uh, he's always um, so accurate. Always worrying. Uh, I, I do it. I do it because Kay always he gets a bit panicky and he sends me a little uh, DM. <laughs> right, the flow show. So I leave it to the last minute because he uh, it gets him twitching a bit. <laughs> nice. But uh, no, I was uh, I was uh, pushing uh, pushing the boat a bit this morning, trying to get on and get everything together. Um, but lots going on, lots of trading going on. So uh, that always uh, takes priority, as you know. Um, oof, what a day yesterday, eh? Um, I've got to say, you know, the, the, the whole team here at Forex Analytics, you know, I don't think people could have been more prepared uh, in advance of, of the data yesterday than uh, the guys here at Forex Analytics did. Um you know, here on the flow show all through the week, the face, Dale, Blake, um, all the guys, Steve. Um, can I mention Steve still? I know you No, uh, he doesn't like exist. To... He's dead to yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know no, it was it was good, yeah. It was a uh, really good preparation and you know, sometimes we'll get things right, sometimes we'll get things wrong, but uh overall, you know, experience uh helps. Let's leave yeah, it I, I hope I hope the viewers here and the people in the chat room and everyone else, you know, you, you, you're you learning from it. That's our aim. It's not just to come on and say, hey, yeah, we you know we got it right and made the calls, that sort of thing. It's it's that we hope you learn from this. So you can do the analysis yourself. You know what can happen at these big events rather than having to, you know, listen to us uh, blathering on. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good day yesterday for uh, the guys here. And uh, I hope uh, hope you all uh, enjoyed it. Um, so we'll obviously go over what uh, happened yesterday, but let's just uh, chew through uh, some headlines and bits and bobs. Um, China are apparently going to inject more state capital into energy and grain sectors. Um, part of the uh, trying to get things get the engine running again over in China. They're going to further issue policies to support the housing and rental market, including a 100 billion won housing rental loan plan. And they will look to support developers uh, with their offshore debt repayments by providing policy support such as, such as better Forex management. Um, they really are trying to housing boom their way out of uh, any slowdown here. Um, that is the big sector they're, they're looking to hit, obviously, for the problems that uh, happened over the last year or so, a couple of years. Um, and that is going to likely be their, their key way out of uh, an economic slump um, if one is to come. Um, so if that, uh, if that happens, it may be a bit short lived given the nature of it. Um, I would think we may see China seeing some uh, increased activity, a little bit of a, a mini boom, if you like, for a few months. And then we'll need to see what happens after that, whether it all drops off a cliff or, or pulls back a bit. But um, they seem to be going hammer up tong with the support. Um, now, Japan, um, the, the BOJ, the government are under some heavy pressure uh, on the yields. Um, they've been pushed uh, above the top of the uh, band uh 0.5 percent and the bank of japan have had to step in yet again um in fact they've stepped in more than once uh, overnight uh, to keep uh, those yields capped in there um now it's the one thing they also do and i, I want to get an opinion on this because I, I can't find too much on it um amid the news that they were conducting uh, another unscheduled bond op yesterday they also uh, announced that they will be providing zero interest two year loans for two trillion yen. Um, and this may be an effort to give banks loans to help with keeping the cap in place, so to getting them to buy bonds. Because obviously, if you deposit at the Bank of Japan, you are getting a negative interest rate. So you're paying the bank to hold your money um, institutionally. 
but they're now providing zero interest loans for two years. Um, so you don't, the firms don't pay that penalty. Now, as far as I can tell, uh, and I've looked back on this and tried to do a bit of digging into it, the last time they did something like this was back in 2021 for getting firms to reduce emissions. So nothing to do with monetary policy or bonds or anything like that. Um, Kate, is this, uh, is this something new or just something that they do all the time and I've only just seen the headline? Uh, it's new to me. I've only seen the, the headline uh, um, as you actually speak about it. Um, I, 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 yeah, it's, it's uh, probably in a, in a way, but we also know that uh, regional banks were, uh, were a bit in trouble with the negative interest rates, but um, is that just uh, giving people cash for free? Um, I don't know. I, did they say um, where uh, or to who they would uh, lend this, uh, this money? Because I, I, I don't no. see headlines even. Um, where is it? No, I mean, it, it came out, uh, this the only place it came out was on, on Bloomberg and it came out, as I say, amid the headlines that they were doing this other um, unscheduled operation. It was it was literally one line. Um, so I don't actually, I, I've got no more details on it. Um, well, if it would be, yeah. uh, if it would be to banks, it's, uh, it's probably a bit of hidden QE also, but uh, if it's, um, they, they could do it to the government. I don't know to who they will. Uh, yeah. Uh, then. I think, uh, I think perhaps the only thing we, might read into it um, outside of the details is that this is this is part of the pressure that's now piling onto the the Bank of Japan because they've moved the cap, um, they've widened the band, and they've supposedly to relieve some pressure, and it's just brought more pressure on onto them. Um, now we know that effect uh, has been seen in dollar yen and yen pairs and the like. Um, it's I don't know. It feels like there's really some big pressure coming in on the bank now. You know, we've had some pressure coming in the last few months. It seems to be the snowboard is rolling uh, and it's getting bigger. Obviously, the Bank of Japan next week um, likely to remain unchanged. Perhaps we should be looking for comments about what's going on in the market, um, how they view it at the moment, um, no. whether there's any indication they, they might widen the band again or anything at all. Um, I am. Um... I just saw that uh, City saying that uh, they they expect actually the Bank of Japan that that Kuroda will do the work before his um, his successor comes on. Uh, that means that uh, they think uh, City thinks that they will end YCC next week. So that would be like something really, 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 really big. Um, the, the Bank of Japan announced uh, announced more uh, JGB buying for um, Monday. Um, yeah. Uh, so, but uh, they they're meeting. I think it's the 18th, right? Um, we we are uh, going to uh, to know from them. I'm, that's going to be some sort of a meeting. There's your next biggest ever event coming. Um, <laughs> yep. We move from one to the other. <laughs> There's your next biggest one coming. Um, yeah, so some banks are, are now saying or thinking that um, um, Bank of Japan is, is just going to abandon uh, the yield curve control, which uh, um, that's going to be a big shock um, to, yeah. to, to everybody. And that is then understandable that the market is now selling record amount of, uh, of JGBs. The, the, the 10 year yield, whenever they are not buying uh, JGBs, the, the 10 year yield uh, trades trades above their uh, 50 BPs line. And um, um, and in any case, it, it hangs at their 50 BP uh, line all the time. But the risk for them is uh, somewhere is, is small, right? I mean, Bank of Japan is not going to cut rates. So uh, you, you got somewhere your risk is defined. Uh, you can lose half a percent or so. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah if they, guys, yeah. So, so interrupt. This is what happens when you are monetizing your debt for years and years and years, and you're basically the market. Whenever you give the market uh, the leeway, it will force you to become once again the the only buyer in the market, right? It's it's yeah. it's so much intervention for so long. It's uh, after a while there's no alternative. I mean, if imagine if um, uh, they just left JGBs to trade freely. 
<laughs> I don't want to be a massacre, right? I don't want to imagine that actually. So the more they interfere, the more they monetize, the more they buy, the more they do that, the worse it's going to be. And every opportunity the market gets is going to absolutely punish them. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, it's just it's just ridiculous how in the last twenty years central banks have just um, are just uh, controlling or trying to control the price of everything. Yeah, I know, but I mean, in 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 today's context, um, indeed, I mean, abandoning yield curve control is going to be something absolutely spectacular. Um, yeah, the, I don't think they will, though. They can't. Well, they I mean, can't. maybe for ten case, minutes they can abandon it. Yeah. <laughs> my base case is still that they won't. Uh, but putting the YCC band, let's say, zero to one percent, is is not going to change much. Uh, probably the next day we are trading at one percent. Um, I, I know abandoning would be something really spectacular. And also, it's not my base case because I've been repeating that endlessly. The, the, the Japanese government has been um, injecting so uh, well, no, putting in place so many stimulus packages that I can't see BOJ letting the, the yields now fly to two or three percent and putting their own government uh, in, uh, in, uh, in jeopardy. Yeah. Um, and um, so, yeah, I think those calls for abandoning YCC, uh, I, I don't know, um, it's strong. And to reply to Mike, uh, why buy JGBs if they're abandoning YCC, YCC next week? It doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense because they have put the, the, the minus half percent to plus half percent in place. So they have to respect it. They, it whether they paint themselves into a corner or not, or whether it's right or not, is just not the question. They have said that the top end of the JGB 10-year uh, yield is half a percent. So they are obliged to, to, to defend it. It was like uh, when SMB put the bottom of the euro Swiss at, uh, at 120 and saying that we will go into eternity to defend it until they can't defend it anymore. But until the decision is made to abandon it, they are obliged to, to, to defend it. Otherwise, what would be the need of, of, of them uh, just having it in place? So... Uh, I think they just have to intervene, right? Um, yeah, so my base case is not for them to to, to abandon YCC next week, but um, I don't see many alternatives. They could, uh, if, if they stop buying uh, rates or and ETFs, uh, Nikkei is probably going to collapse. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, they are now in the corner where they painted themselves in and uh, it's crunch time now. And um, yeah, the market is, is is just buying in, selling record demand of JGBs and uh, and we'll see what happens next week, uh, I guess. Yeah, I think you're spot on. It is, it is crunch time. Um, you know, we, we've we been wondering for a few years when that moment's going to come, haven't we? And, uh, you know, we could be on the cusp of it now. Let's see how they manage it. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's for next week, um, unless we get any headlines in the meantime. Um, now, uh, Japan's economy minister Goto said, or Goto said that uh, they're not planning to discuss a, the Bank of Japan's exit strategy. Um, this was when he was asked about whether they would do so. Uh, so these special sessions, um, whether they would also consider monetary policy measures. Um, as we heard before, the, the Kashida was apparently going to have meetings with the Bank of Japan to discuss what they're doing. Also, the bank was perhaps going to review how their easing measures are going on. Um, but at the moment, it says they're not planning to discuss or the government's not planning to discuss the exit strategy uh, with the bank. Um, an ex-central bank official um, said that the bank may tweak yield curve control this year if wage hikes broaden. Um, and as we know, that's another piece of the puzzle uh, coming into play, all these wage hikes could be a big factor behind what uh, the BRJ decide to do. Um, we still may not get, we've had a lot of it coming out and it seems like there are gonna be some decent wage hikes, um, but there's still uh, a couple of months to go before we get to the, the end of the fiscal year and the new fiscal year, and we really start getting some of the uh, concrete plans of what's going to happen. Um, Right, moving from Japan over to the Bank of England and uh, a bit of a surprise, they apparently made 3.5 billion profit on the emergency bond buying program that they did uh, late last year that caused all the, the big flap with the uh, pension companies and the like. 
Um, so 3.5 billion profit. Nice work if you can get it. Um, right, coming over to the US. Um, some CEOs uh, report the WSJ say they expect a US recession, but most think it will be short. Um, talking soft landing over there um, and with the jobs market still remaining strong, um, the feeling is that perhaps we are heading towards more of a soft landing than a hard landing. Um, I still think the jury's out on that, um, but we shall take it as it comes. Now, let's get stuck into the CPI. Um, first and foremost, what happened in the data? Oh, here we go, give it that crap. So it came in in line with expectations. Um, as we said, um, one of the scenarios would be is whether it comes in and in between or around expected and the prior. So it came in at 6.5 as expected, came in at 5.7 on the court as expected, confirming the dip, but maybe not as low as some might have been expecting in the market. Um, give me one second. I just need to take profit on some oil. Um, so the reaction we got was, as we said yesterday, anywhere around expectations or in between that and the prior, you're likely to see the dollar reacting by going up, yields going up. Um, and as mentioned, very unlikely that that move would last. Um, and last it didn't. And uh, quite spectacularly, really, um, if we look at it on the short term, um, you wouldn't even know we got a little bit of a bounce, but we did. We were trading around 130.40 ish, I think, at the time when the, the news came out, and we got some uh, price shenanigans going on again, um, like we did last month, minutes into the report, where uh, dollar yen was starting to dip, dollar got bought. We saw a uh, euro dollar into 108, and this was all before the, the news dropped. Um, then we got a little bit of a dollar bounce and then it's been downhill ever since, particularly for dollar yen uh, and decent breakups in euro dollar, Aussie dollar, any dollar uh, you like. So the reaction was pretty nailed on. Um, but what does it mean really for what we're seeing for the Fed? Well, as you can see there, pricing for a 25 pip hike is now at 93.3%. Um, Prior to the data, it was around, uh, or has been this week, around 75%. It has ticked up uh, to 91%, and now it's a bit higher, 93% probability. This is via the uh, CME Fed Watch, which uh, uses its metrics from the futures market that uh, Stell Point showed us yesterday. So it seems like 95, 90% uh, or high 90%. In the 90 percent that we're going to get a 25 pip hike and that's been borne out a bit by some of the fed members that came out yesterday after the report um fed's harker was first off the bat saying it's time for future fed rate hikes to shift to 25 pip increments um, he expects a few more hike year hikes this year then expects the fed to get rates just over five percent and hold once hikes end the fed will need to hold steady for a bit um, on the inflation front, he said that core inflation is likely to moderate to 3.5% in 2023, but not hit the Fed's 2% target until 2025. Now, notice his use of the core inflation number as his gauge for Fed target. Um, this is uh, something central banks like to do, uh, a little bit of accounting smoke and mirrors. Um, they'll be looking at the core number um, for their target. He says the worst of the inflation surge is now likely over and eye popping inflation readings now likely in the rearview mirror. So, again, another Fed head doing a bit of a victory lap. Um, Bullard was out as well, saying that Q4 GDP growth is looking better than expected. Um, he says that the US labor market is strong and it's hard to see how unemployment will rise. Um, I wonder if he's calling the top there. Um, something I joked about yesterday. I think I'll go for minus 200K for the next NFP, seeing as he's saying that uh, unemployment won't rise. Um, he also says something north of 5% interest rates is the lowest level the Fed could use to credibly restrict inflation. His preference is that if we are shooting for north of 5%, we should get there as soon as possible. So hawkish. Um, slant still from Bullard wants to get up to uh, over 5% as quick as while others are now turning a bit more cautious. 
Feds Barkin was another one who's in the cautious camp, saying it makes sense to steer more deliberately as we work to reduce inflation, is in favour of a slower rate hike path, uh, but possibly higher level of rates. Um, he says the last three inflation prints are a step in the right direction, but is cautious that while average inflation has dropped, the median inflation has stayed high. Um, Bostic, another one. Inflation report today was welcome news and may allow the Fed to move more slowly. Um, would be comfortable moving at 25 pips if conversations with business leaders are consistent with slowing inflation. Um, business leaders almost unanimously feel um, that business is strong and they don't expect layoffs. So as we mentioned, it seems the market is shifting down to expectations of a 25 pip hike. Um, we've also had a headline from uh, our old mate, Timmy Leakes, um, after the report saying that the report does tee up the likelihood of a 25 pip hike in the Feb meeting. Um, whether that's a, a full nod, we remain to be seen, but the surprise now, as we uh, sit here today, is that they go a 50, not a 25. So Mike just said pivot. Oh, we'll have to see. At the moment, we're, we're trading the hike cycle. A lot of people still think in the end of this year is when the Fed will be forced to pivot. But there is still this soft landing to deal with. Um, and if they can navigate that, then maybe they will be keeping rates higher for longer. I'm not sure whether switching so quickly to a 25 will give the message, uh, the correct message to markets. Um, I still have an expectation that they might go another 50, one more 50 before they move down, just to tell the market we're doing this. Um, don't get too dovish on us just yet, um, but we'll see about that. Um, lastly, on the central bank front, um, the hawk at the Bank of England said that underlying inflation dynamic in the UK looks pretty robust and the bank needs to do more on raising rates and the risk of over tightening um, says we are not there yet. Uh, now, man, she was uh, the most hawkish at the last MPC meeting. The only voter who wanted to go a 75 hike. Um, so she's uh, top hawk at the uh, Bank of England, but doesn't see inflation coming down as quickly as some others do. Um, and I think she's right on that. So, guys, what do we make of this inflation stuff then? Um, has the market now gone a bit too far or has it got what it wants and it's going to keep going? Good question. Um, we did say yesterday that if it came in line, uh, unfortunately, it would be a kind of a non-event. And in the grand scheme of things, yes, markets have rallied a touch, but um, uh, really we didn't see any major move. So that we, we go back to the uh, status quo, which is the market not believing the Fed that they're going to be... Um, holding on to whatever the peak rate is uh, for most of the year or for the, the rest of the year, as they have told us. So um, it's it's a tricky one. You know, it's uh, I wouldn't want to go against this. Uh, sorry, I wouldn't want to be um, uh, chasing this market because there's still a lot priced in in terms of um, uh, how little the Fed's going to hike from now and how brief the, um, the, the, uh, the, the stay at that level is going to be. So, I mean, it's, it's a difficult one. I, I unfortunately haven't uh, make, made any decisions on my positions yet. Um, but, uh, you know, I was kind of hoping to get a, a little uh, outlier number so that we could uh, get some movement on, on the market, but we didn't. So I, I, I don't have much of use to say today, unfortunately, because this was, uh, as we said before, um, unfortunately, a non-event, uh, you know, numbers coming in line. I don't know if Kay has any ideas, but I'm I'm stumped at the moment. Yeah, no worries, mate. Kay, over to you, mate. Um, yeah, I think... Um... The question, uh, as, as we've already said many times in Stelios, uh, every day the, the market is still fighting the Fed. So the market is not pricing in the, the terminal rate above 5%, and that's a bit of a risk to still, in my opinion. Uh, now, the question of uh, 25 or, um, or 50, uh, I think 50 is still possible, but 
if I'm not mistaken, we will have the next NFP out before. When, when is the next FOMC? Uh, it's the 31st. 31st, 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 31st January, yeah. 1st oh, no, of so they are, they, are, they are meeting before <laughs> yes. the next labor report because we are going to have those 2022 revisions, which could be a bit of a shocker. Um, if the dollar continues to, to weaken like it is, I think that increases the chance for a 50. Um, I'd say they are going to try to put it to, to 5%, but is it really important whether it is four, three quarters to 5% the Fed funds or five to five and a quarter percent in the big scheme of things? We could argue that, that it's important because taking it up there would mean that the short end of the curve is going faster above the CPI. Uh, because they want the real rates uh, in uh, in positive territory. Now there's a discussion about what's a real rate, but um, let's let's say the nominal rates. But they are never going to to manage to put the nominal rates um, across the curve above where inflation is right now, because if you look at the 20s and 30s, they are more like in the 360 percent than in than in the four percent. It's only the short end. Now. Um, I'd say the possibility of the 50 is still there, um, but usually, and uh, we've been talking about it as well, Stelios uh, um, coming back uh, with that regularly, say, is that the, the Fed is usually giving the market what it wants, or at least not um, fighting too much on the monetary uh, policy front. So the, the actual rate uh, hike may be, uh, may be a 25, but uh, now, so personally, I think if they do 25, they go three times uh, 25. But if they, but they could do 50, and then and then Powell could come out with a shocker and say like, okay, and now we are going to wait and see what happens, and and then all of a sudden you, you we, we have to price out the the, the last 25 possible BP. So um, the jury is out. Um, I think the chance for a 50 is, uh, is still real, but uh, it could come in as a dovish 50 as well. So like like we had a bit uh, from the, the Bank of uh, England last time, right? Um, I don't think the Fed is, is uh, taking too much of, a, of a, an example uh, from the Bank of England, maybe. But, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's all within, uh, within the possibilities right now. Um, yeah, no. Yeah. Well, yeah, Mike. Um, the Fed, the, the market is always fighting central banks. Um, I, I haven't known anything else since I've been in the markets for forty years. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. To me, there's still an open, open play in in the in the bigger um, in in the global picture and 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 especially on FX. Um, I I think the dollar's got. A hit. We said the dollar will likely be sold on rallies, right? So that's exactly what happened. Um, now we are coming into pretty important levels. We're we going to have a look at the levels later, but we are coming into quite important levels. And um, really, it's the question whether we have done enough. And whether we have done enough, I think, is going to be depending on what the Michigan is going to, the preliminary Michigan for January is going to tell us this afternoon. I, th I think that could be a mover because just because it's Friday, just because we had those moves that we had uh, lately. And um, yeah, it, it could be the final nail in the coffin for this week's dollar, or it could uh, force a few to uh, to revisit um, their, uh, um, which we can now say very bearish dollar um, Dollar positioning, I think. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a mover uh, for the time being. I don't carry too many dollar positions. I'm I had a decent run yesterday, and um, just see what see what happens. Open open to uh, any suggestions. Um, but um, as far as the CPI number is concerned, I think it's was a we we the mark, we got what we wanted, and the market got what it wanted. So now I think it's uh, back uh, back to um, the ball in the middle and uh, it's 1-1 uh, or 1-0 yeah. the market. And uh, on to the next event, the uh, Bank of Japan next week. Yeah. Um, but as Kay mentioned, yeah, Michigan is the only data we've got out. It can be, this one can be a bit of a funny number. Sometimes the market can completely ignore it um, and sometimes it can move on it. I think as Kay 
says, I think today it could be one of those times where it's a bit of a mover, um, being so fresh over after the uh, inflation data. And I think it's going to be the inflation numbers, as usual, that are going to be key to it. Um, it's these two numbers you're going to need to watch, the one-year inflation and the five-year inflation numbers. If they come down significantly, um, you know, a big part of central banks is what the consumer thinks inflation is going to do. And if that drops uh, significantly, that's going to play into what we've seen, probably likely more dollar weakness, uh, yields maybe edging a bit lower. Um, then take what happens in the, the main numbers here, sentiment numbers overall. If we see inflation coming down, but consumer sentiment going up, then that plays into the soft landing narrative because then the consumer is not seeing any big problems ahead. And uh, that's why they're not likely to change spending patterns and, and things like that. So, yeah, could be big data coming up uh, later on. Um, for me, the moving yields is uh, potentially going a bit too far. You know, our old mate, the two year, which is what we're roughly using uh, as an indicator for the path of rates and the ceiling coming down now out to the four and a quarter level really looking very weak um, and that may be something the fed will want to push against you know it's no point saying you're going to raise right what uh, rates to five five and a quarter five and a half percent if the market is only going to price you at four percent um, because that's what translates through into consumers into the the, the ground level economy um, transmissioning only at four percent it doesn't do the job it's supposed to do. Um, so the Fed are effectively losing, you know, 100 pips or something um, on their rate hikes in real terms. So that may be something that the Fed push against, you know, this fight weakening of softening of financial conditions. Um, and I think that, yeah, maybe the market is getting a little bit dovish, uh, the Fed, and we could see a bit of a pushback uh, from those guys. Conversely, they could have one eye on the data and seeing this weakness and uh, are quite happy to let the financial conditions ease a bit um, because on the flip side, they may get rates to 5%, but if they're only being translated through at 4%, it's a bit more of an easing path. So it may help the economy um, get this soft landing rather than hitting it harder with higher rates for things like mortgages and, and loans and stuff like that. So it's a bit of six or one half a dozen the other uh, as what the Fed may be doing. I did expect them to be more and power to be a bit more strong on these financial conditions. Um, but uh, they've been mentioning it. A few Fed heads have mentioned it, but not really strongly. Um, so I, I think it's 50-50 what they do regarding that. Um, for now, on the price moves, um, I mean, my thought yesterday, as I said here on face in the room, chat room i saw absolutely no reason why the dollar would go higher uh, significantly and if it did that it would last um and that proved to be the case i wasn't in uh, apart from my aussie dollar i wasn't in anything and then coming into number i was just sitting there thinking i want i want to be short dollar yen um and i just i just jumped in um just at around 131 um got the numbers dollar rallied i managed to get some more in near 131 again and now I'm going to sit on that uh, for as far as it may go and I'm happy to, to sell any decent rallies we get in this one. Um, the Bank of Japan may be one that gives us another big shove up um, and I'll hit that rally as well, uh, all being well. Um, from here, I think what we're going to be seeing is a bit of a step down in the big or the bigger levels uh, that we've been looking at. Obviously, we were looking at these prior lows um, they put up a fight yesterday around 129.50 um, after all the data, but the pressure told out and we, we've had the break. So that's where I think we're stepping up uh, the next resistance point or the nearest resistance point. Further to that, I think we'll see a step down from this resistance up here down to the 133 area, 132.80.90 zone. That's going to be our, our new 134.50. Um, but if we significantly hold below this 129 and a half, 129s, then I think we are going to see some, some further downside. Um, on the tech front, it's uh, it's been a bit dodgy because it's really sliced through all the, all the tech levels. You know, we, we saw it cut through this 133 zone. I was, you know, two decent fibs in there, went straight through. We've seen it go straight through the, the 61.8 of uh, the 
March move here. Um, so, you know, that part of the rally is, is coming undone. The next fib is a 50 fib of the big move from the 102s, um, 127, 26. And, and that 127 area is, a, is another traffic area um, that we watched and traded on the way up. So it is going to be important. Um, but as I say, at the moment, the techs aren't standing up for an awful lot. We're even uh, into the cloud, aren't we, Kay? Which I'm sure you can show uh, in a bit. Yeah. Um, and, and those sort of indicators when, when they don't hold or don't look like uh, having an effect on the market, it tells you just what sort of volatility we've got here. Um, and, the, you know, the fundamentals driving it and the techs aren't standing up to it. Um, just moving on to another pair, euro dollar. Um, I've had this area and we've been speaking about it. 108, 108, 30, 108, 70 all the way to 109. I've had this on my charts for, you know, maybe six years now, seven years. Um, said it was going to be a big area and thus it's proving. At the moment, we're sitting bang in the middle of it um, and we're finding resistance on the top and support on the bottom, 108.30, 108.70. Um, this is one of these moments where you go, you probably go with either side. If we come back out the box, we're probably going to see a, a steeper pullback. Um, maybe down to mid 107s, maybe even more. Conversely, if we get above, we've still got a bit of traffic into the 109s, but any signs that we're starting to hold this on a break, um, I would be expecting us to push up further. Um, it's a completely different picture to, to Dolly N that's ignoring the text where, you know, this is textbook, if you like, when you draw lines and you have lines sitting on a chart for a long time, how the price action develops. Um, now, I've not got a huge interest in, in euro trading euro dollar at the moment, um, but I am keeping an eye on this area because if we do find that this holds, it could mean that we get a significant drop back um, over the next few weeks or days or weeks. You know, it could go all the way back down to, to something like the 105s. You know, it's got history of doing that as a technical level when you look back at it. When you get these tests and these holds, you know, there's big pips to be made. So it's easy to get caught up in the short term noise and thinking about what's going on. Don't ignore what's going on. The trend is definitive. Look at all those green bars on the weeklies. The trend is up, but these are the levels that you have to ask the question. OK, are you going to go further or is this where you pause for a bit and maybe we get a pull back? As I say, 106s, maybe 105s before we then move on again. So take it as it comes, trade it as the price action shows you. Price action is always king in these situations. Um, but also, I want to hear your thoughts. You guys have been a bit quiet this week on telling us what you're looking at, the pairs you're in, uh, how you're trading. So get on your keyboards, warriors. Um, and while we're waffling on, let's see some comments coming in about how you traded yesterday, what your views are on these price moves. And uh, we can have a little chat about those as well. Um, last one before I hand it over to the K-man um, is Aussie Dollar. Um, obviously, because I'm in this and managing the position. Looking at now got the confirmed break. Um, we were looking at this this week. We had the, the break up. Then it failed, looked a bit messy. But afterwards, we're holding, holding, holding. And now we're shooting up again. Um, where can we go? We've had a little, we've had one touch close to uh, 70, one test. i um, actually got a separate short on up here, 69.94, which I've... Uh, already chipped some out on. I like trading big figures like this that haven't been tested for a long while, just on a first attempt. Um, so I've got a separate short opposite my core longs. Um, if we get a break up here, then we need to clear probably 2030 area. Um, and the reason being just formally prior highs. And again, a bit of a traffic zone through there, as you can see previous times we've been around this area we've had support and resistance in there. So if we get above 70, I wouldn't suggest that's going to be a break unless we clear, you know, this 20, 25, 30 area. If we do, then we're on for this, uh, at least this FIB confluence that we've got here, um, you know, up around the uh, high 70, 70s, 70, 80s, that sort of area. Um, for now, look at the support areas. If we are going to move on, we're going to need to keep the support. Um, the first area that is going to be around this sort of 69.50 area, 40.50 area. Um, 
then maybe down towards the, the 20s again. If we can keep above 69 and close above 69 uh, today, that'll be very bullish in my opinion, um, and it keeps the upside in play. But overall, again, the trend has been in play. We perhaps taken another leg higher. Um, I'm happy to keep my longs uh, and stay in this one and see where it goes. Um, on that, Kay, I shall uh, hand the baton over to you, mate. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, oh, let me kill my squawk first of all. Uh, otherwise, making a bit too much noise here. Huh? Um, yeah, okay, let's first have a look at uh, quick uh, this dollar yen. There's, there's a couple of things. First of all, um, and, and Mike is right in saying that we could say that the 50% retracement of the dollar yen is, is around 126.60, but um, we usually take the, the it, it has done another leg lower and not below this spike low from the from the um, uh, when 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 the virus uh, hit the markets. But um, take it from here, the, the the real I would say move up. Uh, it's it's indeed coming in around 127. Uh, well, uh, Ryan has it at 25, 25, 35. Doesn't really matter. 10 points in uh, in in this market. Uh, what is interesting, though, is that we also have this. If we take the like the really uh, wide long-term uh, uh, triangle here, um, the the support uh, the the line comes in around one twenty-seven and a half. And look at what it did on the way up. It shot through, came back on it, and then we 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 moved higher again. So I would say this one twenty call it one twenty-seven one twenty-seven and a half. Is going to attract some uh, some eyes, in my opinion, and and that may um, I'm not saying it will, but that may somewhere hold. I don't know whether there are stops, but that may hold until next week, Bank of Japan, um, unless we get like uh, disastrous numbers out of the uh, and, and Michigan this afternoon. And then, um, interestingly, what happened? Yesterday is that we entered the weekly cloud on uh, on uh, on the dollar yen. Um, the uh, the level there is one twenty nine sixty five. So um, if we start to see some retracements on the dollar yen, which and and funny that it's also the prior low around one twenty nine and a half, one twenty nine sixty five. Um, if we start to get a close back above uh, these uh, these levels, then we may. There, there may be a little bit of a chance to get back into the into the one thirties. So, but keep an eye on that. I'm not sure whether it's really that important going into the Bank of Japan because the Bank of Japan next week will be very very important. But um, know the Japanese uh, rather look at the longer term from the day upwards than than the shorter term to watch their clouds. So they they will have seen this and they will know where this is. So um, if we go and retest the high of the cloud and, and fail to break, um, we may be on our way to 124. So um, just keep it in mind. I mean, you don't have to trade it on, on your day-to-day -day basis, but just keep it in mind. Um, so, so And that's basically what we are seeing on the shorter term as well. The prior low, 129 and a half. Then we are talking about... Uh, yeah, this 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 one one thirty and a half, one thirty one and a half, and then um, the where we stopped uh, last time around one thirty two eighty five, right? And that those are the top side uh, levels, um, downside one twenty seven and a half, and then uh, uh, if if it really goes below there, we could talk, be talking about one twenty four, one twenty five. Now. Um, Let's look at a couple of other things. Ryan already spoke about the euro dollar. Um, you know where my big level lies. It's it's right there. Um, high 108s, 109, um, 10903 here, and that's the 50% of the. Um, um, put it on the daily. The 50% of the. Um, Let's call it when the Fed started to uh, verbally at least pivot, um, and and then down to the lows. The 50% is uh, is at 109. Important level in my in my opinion on the on the euro dollar to monitor um, cable, and that's more of a dare I say short term um, probably. But if you want to, if somebody wants to trade ranges, I've done it yesterday once and. Uh, I, it was pretty successful. We had this uh, this this drop back down to to 121. 
I'm trading against this, this, uh, those prior highs and lows. Um, it's not really much of a chart level. I think some people have extensions there, but I'm, I'm not looking at, uh, I, I don't need extensions. I don't have any hair anymore. Um, the, I, I think this is a, a relatively interesting level on the short term, this, this 12140s. Just for a little bit of a scalp, I've done it again this morning. So I'm, uh, and, and having already managed a bit of the position, my stop is just above. Just when it breaks through 50, I'm gone. Um, it's already a free trade. So that's a, a, a perhaps an interesting one to watch. Um, I'm not sure whether I will even have a position going into the uh, Michigan this afternoon or just uh, bang the rest of my pips since it's coming back a little bit now and then uh, enjoy the weekend. So that on the cable. Um, Euro sterling, also short term. Um, we had a bit of a channel, flag, whatever you, you may call it here. Uh, we are on the retest right now. Not sure that in the bigger scheme of things, this 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 has a lot of importance, but I'm, I'm still, um, my core, I've got it uh, still going, uh, still monitoring this uh, just low uh, 89s, because I think that's going to be a bit of a make or break. Um, we could actually look at this one as well, but then I'm, I'm not a fan of, of, of going to put too many lines on there. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of a level. Then we're talking back to uh, 88 and a quarter if it goes back down. And then uh, the famous bottoms that we are seeing uh, just below 88. I think that's still, I still think the move is, is, is gradually for, for a move uh, higher, uh, back up to 90 probably. But um, we, have, we have to respect the levels, right? And uh, so I'm, I'm just uh, trading it around. It's, it's making quite a bit of money in the meantime, uh, just by uh, the washer dryer uh, rinsing pro program. Um, this one, Kiwi, um, we, we've been trying, trying, but then uh, it's starting to huff and puff around uh, just above 64 again. Um, and, and also perhaps we are getting the last shove uh, on the Michigan this afternoon, but um, I'd be a bit careful with the Kiwi if we if we don't manage to, to, to really hold into the 64s for the end of the week. We could see a move back down to low 63s. It's, it's all in the... In the, in, in the possibilities, not saying that anything changes and, and, and that we are not on, on the way up, but um, um, I'd, I'd respect this uh, 1035 zone on, uh, on the Kiwi if, uh, if, if you're long, perhaps it's, uh, it's, it's time to um, just bank some pips. Um, Aussie Kiwi, no change. Um, it's, it's just a, a it's playing a bit up and down, but now we, we are above this uh, 108.80. Uh, we've retried it uh, yesterday afternoon. Now we're trading uh, 109.20. I think the next level is around 109.80. For as long as we are, we are holding those levels now, um, I, I'm already putting a partial stop just below the 108.80, just because if it goes down, we may see a move back lower and, and, and trying to Pick some up again, but um, I think for as long as the market is willing to trade the Chinese reopening, this this one has probably a little bit more uh, more to run, closer to um, one ten perhaps in in this zone here, one hundred nine eighty, one ten and a quarter. That would be like probably an ideal tar target just for now, and then reassess. Um, Noki, um, the um, the oils are um, are getting back up. By the way, well done, uh, Ryan, on your uh, oil trade. <laughs> Although on the batteries <laughs> yesterday, it was a nice, yeah. nice, uh, <laughs> nice catch of a, of the falling uh, of, of of the falling uh, beach ball, right? Uh, yeah, it bounced, uh, it bounced uh, straight away. Nice one. Uh, and we're finding the same moves in uh, in the oil-related uh, currencies. Um, Noki is also coming back a little bit. So we've rejected those uh, 1080s on the Euro Noki. Um, I think there's a possibility today or, or, or start of next week to get back into the 50-60 zone, perhaps, and then uh, there we assess. I think the, the 1050 around is should be a, a relatively decent support right now. Norges Bank is still selling a few uh, Norwegian Kroner every day, but um, I think oil flows are, um, 
because they're selling less every day than they were doing prior months. So oil flows um, should have the upper end um, if uh, oil continues to to rally, and we we could see the 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 rest of the retracement back into the ten and a half zone, probably on on the euro noki. I don't have anything running in it right now. Dollar Norway, pretty uh, interesting. Um, we've we've tried a, a fair few times to break above ten. Uh, and uh, it kept in the end. And now we're already back onto uh, to the intermediate supports. 985, uh, we, we're trading 987 just, just above. We tested it this morning. Um, 985, 983, um, a little bit, yeah, in, this lo in these low 980s. But then the more interesting zones will be here, right? 978, um, it's been a springboard for, uh, for, for the, um, the moves higher. Tried it a number of times below and then we shot. And then the big level of no return, I think, on the dollar Norway is still here, 970. Um, make or break. If it if it breaks down, um, then I think there might be several percentage more uh, to come on the on the downside. But 970, big 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 level on the uh, on the dollar Norway. Um, Max is is strong, really strong. Um, I know that uh, uh, Blake is still in it. I'm I'm just like scalping sometimes and uh but uh, there's very 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 little rebound even when the rest of the dollars are correcting as we are doing now uh dollar max is just not going higher um it's still enjoying the carry um it's a 10 percent interest rate currency as i've been mentioning already a number of times and we may be on our way to uh to 18 and a half um these these prior lows here are around the, the bottom end of the channel. So that's where we may be heading. It's another like 2%, nearly 2% from here. Um, on, on the top side, I, it, it's already going to be a, a, a bit of a work to, to get back above 19, but if it would ever go, um, 19 and a quarter should be your first um, decent level of resistance. Um, I'm not a big bear of the euro, as people know, but um, forces to admit that this is making lower highs all the time. So um, again, for the same reason, bit of carry, bit of interest rate play. Max is still doing well. Max is one of the manufacturers uh, of the US um, and high interest rates. Um, so I think it's uh, it's still a valid play um, i'd love to see it go go back up even even into the 2050s you know I, it might be already uh, good but um, we're turning around those 2040s and, and not really making uh, too much headway um, i might give in to my fomo and uh, and re-enter uh, a small one here and see uh, what happens next week um, yeah, oh yeah, the last one we have to talk about is dollar china of course um, the market is really trading the reopening uh, people are saying it's real, so um, um, I, I'm not going to fight it, although we are on support here. We really are on support here in the low uh, 670s. Um, and then we have next levels here coming in around um, 59.62. And then depending on what's happening in the rest of the dollars, I may... I may start to uh, start to look at this uh, uh, again to perhaps uh, uh, catch a knife and then um, with a bit of risk down to below 650 perhaps. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a look at it next week to see what happens to the dollar and then uh, see um, if there is anything to do for a rebound uh, perhaps up to the 697 zone again and then perhaps do the next uh, the next neck low, lower. That's uh, music for the future but um, I'd love to see uh, the, the the clean out. Who knows today uh, that might happen? Uh, One percent move in in dollar China is is, is possible, um, and then see what happens here uh, later today. And for me right now, that's it, Mr. Ryan. Thank you, mate. I was going to speak to you about uh, yeah. dollar one. Um, yeah. One thing that struck me through through this move down through sevens and and where we've seen now, the the officials have been really quiet on it, and usually when you get quite volatile moves either side they they tend to pipe up um yeah, they happy to let this one, well, they're obviously happy to let this one go is there any reason why they're happy to let this one go um yeah i think they they well um oh, there's 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 two things i mean if you 
want the the the, the world to to trade with you um, to have confidence in your economy it's always better to do it with a strong currency than with a weak currency now the yeah. flip side of when they really reopen is that if you export you 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 you'd rather have your currency to be a bit weaker right but i think for the time being it's there um because they know that their economy is sluggish and and yet the market is is buying back into it so I think that's where they are for the time being relatively happy to um, to let this one go. But until what uh, what stage? I'm, I've noticed that PBOC is is fixing their uh, dollar uh, dollar CNY pretty close to the models. So um, they, that means that they are still quite happy. I mean, give and take 10, 20 pips or so. I mean, that that doesn't make any difference. But um, if if one day when and that's uh, an eye, I, I'm always keeping an eye on it. If one day they are starting to fix them a bit, a fair bit higher than than where the models are or where the market is trading, that may be the sign that they say like, okay, this is enough. Now we need the yuan to um, to correct a bit to uh, because we are we are reopening for real, and then uh, we. Um, we are we are going to drive it a bit uh, a bit lower again, but um, yeah. for now I think the, for them it's the main thing is to restore um, confidence in in what in their economy and what they are doing. So um, yeah, it, it goes paired with the reopening, and then uh, and then it it will go in phases, right? Um, yeah. And and then I think perhaps the the next phase will then be trying to keep it in this sort of a range. Um, yeah, and, and the it, rest it, is really a dollar correction, right? If you look at yeah. uh, the high seven thirty eight, six seventy, what is it? That's like uh, uh, sixty six is ten percent. Look at uh, the euro dollar; it did ten percent on the way up. Uh, look at dollar yen; it did more. Cable did more from the low. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, it, the rest is just dollars. Yeah, it's, it's almost looking to spit an image of uh, dollar yen. You could probably put dollar yen well, on it and. Uh, you know what? It's it's it's. I think it it looks more like an inverted euro dollar than a, than a, than a, than a dollar yen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 we may we may talk about that in in one of the next shows. But um, there is some kind of a reason behind there because Europe is is probably a little less categorically against China than the US may be right now. Yeah. So. Um, um, yeah, I think it's rather a, 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 an, an inverted euro dollar right. Now. Yeah, good point. So I want to highlight to people again that this one can be a very good pair to trade because it's not often you get a central bank or, or officials who are so verbal on the on the currency when it's when they feel it's gone too far. So if we start getting, uh, you know, even light comments that, OK, uh, yen strength isn't going to be a one way street uh, like we heard when it was uh, up at the highs, um, that's often your clue to start looking for counter trades to the move yeah. um, because to say you, you don't you don't get a free lunch like you can do in in this pair sometimes i think it's it's a pretty clean uh, well i mean the thing is once you know that pboc the government are are directing the moves in in a certain way and then the rest is a case of confidence and even takes because we we tried again above seven failed and it, it goes down i think it's it's somewhere a relatively clean uh currency pair to trade um yeah. regardless of what people may say um but sometimes if you get a central bank or a government that is directing even their own currency it's an ally to 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 for your trading it's not yeah. a it's not a, a fight uh, enemy I, yeah. and, and, I'm, and i've got the same feeling when when the people talk about oh yeah we are fighting the fed fighting the fed fighting the fed if you if you don't want to fight the fed learn how to make them an ally and 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 see what the market is doing and 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 that's all about that comes all into the big pot of fundamentals but once you get really the grip on it, it sometimes you can make like absolutely great trades on the back of it yeah absolutely mate absolutely right. um well, I guess, uh, sorry mate go on I'm giving it back to you. It's I, I think our hour is uh, we're, we're there. Yeah, our hour is nearly up. So yeah, we shall uh, uh, finish off. And uh, I'm just going to finish off by saying um, you can take advantage of 
uh, some big discounts on the Forex Analytics platform. Um, if you want to enjoy the type of day that some of our traders in the chat room enjoyed yesterday over the CPI, um, there are some big steep discounts on plans at the moment. They won't last for long um, and then they'll go right back up to the uh, usual rate. So uh, if you're looking, thinking about coming and joining us in the chat room, now's probably uh, as good a time as any to do so. Um, so you can take a, a look at that. Um, all that's left to say is thank you very much as usual for coming to the Flow Show. Um, it's been a bit of a funny week. We've done a lot of waiting for yesterday um, and it's good to see that people have made money yesterday. That's what we're all here for at the end of the day. Um, I hope we're steering you well with the analysis uh, and what we do here at Forex Analytics overall. As ever, thank you to the K-Man and Stelios uh, for their valued input as always. Um, do have a safe and peaceful weekend uh, and we shall see you all next week. Thanks guys, thanks Kay. Thanks very much, have a great weekend everybody. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.